Hey everybody, Tom here, and today in this video, I want to teach you how to play the Woodland Alliance Faction for the board game Root. I'm going to talk you through how to set up the character and how to play them, like what happens turn by turn, stuff like that. This is not a strategy guide, it's literally just a here's how this faction operates in the game system of Root. So just a quick introduction to this faction. Uh, this faction is a little different than the other factions. The other factions uh, include you, for example, playing a bunch of cats who are industrializing the forest, or birds who are trying to take their home back. This faction, even though they're represented by these mouse tokens, thematically they actually represent the various rabbits and mice and the wolves that still live in the forest but are under oppression from all of the war and especially from the cats and stuff like that. So even though you're represented by the mouse tokens, really kind of what's happening is you as the player are representing these, these creatures that are still living within these clearings under the rule of these different things and you're kind of oppressed by all of these fights happening, things like that. And so the way I kind of like to think about this, this is almost like the rebels in Star Wars, or maybe I'll get beat up for that, but, but the idea is that they are secretly all over the board already. And what you're gonna be doing on your turn to get the most points is you're gonna try to get sympathy from the various other factions that are fighting around you. So this faction is all about trying to gain sympathy and as you gain more and more sympathy, you're going to get more and more points. So thematically, that's kind of what's going on. Let's go ahead and flip this player board over just to get uh, a little introduction into some setup stuff. Uh, we have 10 warriors here. Again, those are represented by these tokens here, or these, um, these mice. And then we have three bases, one of each suit that's on the board. The fox, the rabbit, and the mouse. You're also going to have 10 sympathy tokens. As I mentioned, that's going to be the main way that you're going to get points. And you can see here in the stats that this is actually a pretty complicated faction. Uh, it's just like ah, things kind of happen in this. No steps are really straightforward. Things are a little bit more complicated, tougher to learn. This is kind of for an experienced player. Uh, like with all of the factions, you're going to have some introductory information here. We also have an overview card that the base, well, all of the factions, I guess, have those. And then there is a walkthrough card. If you're unfamiliar on what to do with your first turn, this can talk you through how to handle your first turn here. Now, setup for this faction is minimal. And in fact, it's going to be faction C. Setup always happens with factions going in alphabetical order to set stuff up on the board. You can see that I'm just imagining that faction A and faction B have already set up. But with such minimal setup, this is going to be really easy. So let me show you what we need to do. We're going to flip the board over. And we're almost not going to put anything. The only thing we're going to be putting on the main board is this victory point token. Because again, we're kind of like, we're going to be really quiet in our little rebellion and sympathy gaining. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take our 10 sympathy tokens and we're going to add them to this track like this. And I should probably point out, this is a second printing of the track. I actually owned the first printing of the game, and there was recently an upgrade pack where you could replace the boards. And one reason that I noticed this was in this second printing, there is no victory point marker here with the first base, or with the, not the base, the first sympathy token. So you can tell if you've got a first printing or not by looking at this first spot. Earlier printings will have a victory point token here. Later ones won't. I guess that was uh, to try to address some of the balancing stuff. Okay, next. We're just going to take these three bases and put them right here on the board like this. Let's take our victory point token to the board. And a final part of setup for us is that we're going to need to draw the top three cards of this deck here. And these are going to be our supporters. And what we're going to do with these three cards that we just drew, you can take a look at them. They're available for you to look at at any time. Uh, but essentially, it's like you're going to have two hands of cards. Your supporters are going to go face down. And these first three cards are going to go face down on this board like that. Your other cards you're going to keep in your hand. And you, you can ex inspect this deck anytime, and you can look at this deck. But basically, the cards in your hand, you could use to craft, or you can use them for normal actions that use the suit. And these cards here, you're only going to be using these cards for the suits. You can't do anything else with these cards. These are just the suits of the cards here. But basically, we are now officially set up. So now that we're set up, what I want to do is I want to teach you how to play this faction. 
And again, recognize it's a little complicated. You're gonna to wanna to have a good grasp on the general rules of the game. If you need help with that, check out the link in the description of this video. I have a video where I do go over all of the uh, basic rules to know. But here we are and we're gonna dive in to what this faction does. Now I'm gonna do something kind of unique in this video. Usually I would teach you exactly what's happening on your turn sequentially. But I'm not gonna do that in this particular video because I found for myself that the bird song was the most complicated. You can see there's a lot of text, there's a lot of stuff going on there. It can feel super overwhelming. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna teach you the basics of the game by starting with the daylight phase, then the evening phase, we'll go into details here. And then when we have a grasp of what's going on, we're gonna come back to the bird song and maybe we'll summarize the other two again. But in general, as I mentioned before, we're trying to get sympathy tokens on the board. When you put a sympathy token on the board, you're going to get immediately the victory points under that. So as soon as I get this sympathy on the board, one point. When I get this one on the board, one point. When I get this one on the board, one point. And so that's not something that happens at the end of your turn, that happens immediately. And there are basically two parts of your turn that are gonna allow you to put sympathy on the board. Sympathy can be put on the board right here. And as I mentioned, we're probably gonna go over this part near the end. And sympathy can be put on the board through this action over here, which we'll go through relatively soon. The cost of placing sympathy, specifically with this action, is gonna be a number of supporter cards for the clearing you wanna put it down. So if you wanna put down this first token, it's gonna to involve spending a matching suit. So maybe I wanna put this token in a, in a mouse clearing, then I'd have to use one of these cards from my supporter deck. So that's what this supporters deck is gonna do, is it's gonna help you get those sympathy. The first three will cost one card, after that it'll be two cards, and then three cards. There's an additional rule about if there's a lot of other uh, warriors from other factions, it's gonna cost you even more, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Like I said, let's try to not overwhelm you. So uh, again, skip the birdsong phase for just a second. Let's talk about what happens on the daylight phase. So like I said, we're gonna basically skip this, but summary, on the birdsong phase, you're gonna have a chance to have a revolution, which will kind of wipe out enemies. And then you're also gonna have a chance to spread some sympathy, to spend some cards in order to put sympathy tokens on the board. Let's get into detail on that a little bit later. But let's go ahead and talk about the daylight phase. So after you've done the bird song phase on your turn, we're gonna talk about the daylight phase now. The first thing you can do is that you can, and you can do these actions as many times as you want, but the first thing you can do is you can craft. Crafting means that you would play a card from your hand and you would be looking at the board for where you have sympathy. We don't have any sympathy out right now, so let's put one out as an example. Let's imagine that a little bit into the game, I've managed to gain some sympathy over here in this rabbit clearing. At the beginning of the daylight phase, if I have this sympathy token in this rabbit clearing, I could craft a card that would require a single rabbit clearing and this says sympathy, like using sympathy. So if I have one sympathy token in a one rabbit clearing, then I would be able to craft this card. This particular card means that I would get this item and items are kind of crafted right here and I would get a point and then discard this card. All right, so crafting is gonna have to do with where you have sympathy across the board. And so in order to craft this card, you would need to have two sympathy tokens on the board and they would need to be in mouse clearings. Or to craft this one, you would need three sympathy tokens on the board and they'd need to be in fox clearings. Now, something to know about sympathy is that you can never have more than one sympathy on any spot. So I could never put a second sympathy token over here. They would have to be spread out. Once you have one sympathy token in a clearing, you can't have any more in that clearing. Okay, so that was crafting. So you're gonna look for your sympathy, use that. Next, we have mobilize. Mobilize is super straightforward. You're gonna need supporters over here, right? That's what these are called. You're gonna need supporters in order to do a bunch of stuff. So you could add a card from your hand into your supporter stack to help you out in the future. And again, you could do this as many times as you want to. You could just move cards from your hand into your sympathy deck. You could also train. Now here's what training means. Training says that you could spend a card from your hand matching a built base to place a warrior in the officer's box. 
confused already, right? Here are bases. We're going to be trying to get these bases on the board. The bases are going to be put on the board from this action over here. Again, we'll talk about that soon. But let's just for a moment imagine that we had done this action and we have a fox base out. So let me just put this on the board in a fox clearing and let's put it right here. It is a building so it would need to go on one of those spaces there. So here's what it would mean to train somebody. Your actions for the evening phase are going to have to do with how many of these warriors you've got in this officer's box. Okay, we're just an underground movement, a bunch of civilians, we're going to need some officers to help us out. And so what this says is that you could spend a card from your hand. Remember, we put this out in the fox base. So I could go ahead and discard this card because it matches uh, the base that we have. And that's going to let me put a warrior from my warrior pool over here into the officer's box. And that's what it would mean to train. If I had more foxes, I could do that again. I could discard another fox card and I could put another warrior here because you can take these actions any number of times that you want to. And that's the daylight phase. So the daylight phase, you can craft. You can craft a card, right? You can mobilize by putting cards from your hand into your supporter deck. Or if you have a base on the board, you could discard a matching suit in order to put uh, a warrior over there. I'm going to bring this card back just so we still have it. Okay, now let's talk about the evening phase. First, you're going to count how many officers you have here. And that's going to determine how many of these actions that you could take. We've only got one officer here in our example, and so we're only going to be able to do one of these things. But let's talk about what you can do here. This is kind of where the basic actions for like that most factions can do come into play. You could move, assuming we had warriors on the board. Let's sneak one in there just to be safe. Moving means that you grab any number of warriors from a clearing, and you could send them across a path to another clearing but you need to make sure that you either rule the clearing that you're moving to, to or the clearing you're moving from. And remember, ruling means that you have more warriors and buildings than other players have. So it's actually kind of tricky to move with this faction because it's a little tougher to get their warriors on the board, but it is possible. So like in this example, I could not move this guy because I don't rule this clearing because I have like, we both have one warrior and no buildings, so it's a tie. Nobody rules it. And I couldn't move over here because it's also a tie. They have one warrior, we have one building, so I couldn't actually move here. But if this was the case, then absolutely I could go over there. All right, so movement is one option here. We'll keep this guy here just for fun. Another action you could do is you could recruit. You could place a warrior at a base. So you don't really have to spend anything, you just need to have, you know, an officer that would allow you to do this. You'd be able to add a warrior to one of your bases. Hey, we rule this now. That's cool. You could battle. Battling is where you're going to roll the dice. So like we could declare ourselves as attackers here to attack this fool. Roll the dice. Wow, that didn't go great. It was a little slanted. But as the attacker, we would take the higher number. As the defender, they would take this number. You would adjust your number down because you can't have a higher number than your warriors. So we'd be down to a one and so would they. And this means that we would deal one hit to them. They would deal one hit to us. And so when we do a hit to them, this would be removed. When they do a hit to us, this would be removed. So just a super quick battle overview in case you're still pretty new to the whole root system. This faction actually does have an ability with battle that I'm going to get to soon. But for now, everything I said stands. And finally, the last thing you can do with this part of the evening phase, if you've got enough officers, is you can organize. This is the one that I was alluding to before. You could remove a warrior and place sympathy there. Now remember, each clearing can only have one sympathy token. But this way, it doesn't involve discarding any cards. We would literally just say, for this organized action, I could remove a warrior. Notice, I can't take this warrior out because this clearing already has sympathy. But I could take this warrior out and put a sympathy token. And because there was a one victory point thing, I would get a point. So that's kind of the importance of having officers here because the more officers you can train, then the more actions you're going to be able to take over here, including getting some sympathy out for pretty cheap. The last thing you're going to do on your turn is you're going to draw one card from the draw pile. Here, let me just grab one. 
plus you would draw uh, one more card for every one of these icons showing. So the more bases you have, the more cards you're going to be able to draw on your turn. And when you draw cards, they always go into your hand, but then you'll always need to discard, discard, <laughs> discard down to five. So that's kind of the basics of the daylight and evening phase. Again, I kind of wanted to emphasize sympathy, bases, officers, things like that. Something else that maybe you're hopefully prepared now to see is that for your supporters, if you don't have any bases on the map, then at most you can have five cards in this supporters stack. So keep that in mind. All right, I think we're ready now to talk about the bird song phase. So the very first part of your turn is the bird song phase. And at first you can do as many revolt actions as you want. And then you could do as many spread sympathy actions as you want. So let's talk about what these are now that we kind of have some presence on the board and we know a little of the vocabulary and stuff. To do a revolt action, what this says is that you would spend two supporters matching a sympathetic clearing. So right now we have uh, sympathy here in this fox clearing and one down here in this rabbit clearing. So I could look through my supporters stack. Again, this is private for us. And we could spend two supporters. Oh, I don't have, oh yes I do. This is a wild, okay? So what I could do is I could go ahead and spend these two cards, the fox and the wild, okay? So spend two supporters matching a sympathetic clearing. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna remove all of the enemy pieces there. For now, there's only this one cat, but literally whatever enemy pieces are here, you get rid of them. Next, this is a little dumb because I'd already put it out, but next, you would place a matching base and then warriors there equal to the total number of matching sympathetic clearings. So let me try to clarify that. So we already have a matching base there, in fact, already. Okay, so that base is already down. Uh, let's pretend that this is how it got into play. So uh, if this base was here, we would grab this base and we would check how many Fox sympathy clearings we have. We only have the one, so we're just gonna grab the one warrior and we're gonna go ahead and put them right here. We could imagine if this had a sympathy token, then we would have added two warriors because you would add one warrior for each clearing that matched that suit that also has a sympathy token. All right, so yeah, let's just put this one here for an example so we can get another warrior out there. So just for clarity, because that can feel a little bit tricky, let's fast forward a little bit. Let's say I have two more Fox cards here as supporters, and let's say that I have this sympathy token out. Let's put it in this clearing here. Now, if I were to take the revolt action, I could spend two supporters matching the Fox clearing, if that's where I want to do this. So I would spend those, remove any enemy pieces that are there, and then we would move the base here, and because we have three sympathy tokens in Fox clearings, then we would add three warriors. And finally, I skipped this earlier, we would place one warrior down here in the officer's box. All right, so that is the whole revolt action, and that's kind of why it could feel overwhelming to some people, I think. It definitely overwhelmed me, for sure. All right, so you could do that any number of times that you want to, uh, though you'd want to have a good amount of supporters before you start doing that stuff. Let's talk about the spread sympathy action, which you can also do any number of times. With this action, you're just it just says it right here, you're going to spend a number of supporters listed on the sympathy track. So to put this token out, we would need to spend two supporters. Okay, so I have two mice supporters, and that would allow me to put one of these tokens. And the rule is, obviously this would have to go to a mouse clearing, there's one up there too. Uh, but the rule is that you need to go adjacent to your other support. You want your support to grow. If you can't do it adjacently, then you could just put one down and go from there. But yeah, so in this example, I could put one here or up there. Any of these clearings would be open. I would just put a sympathy token down there. And so that's pretty much it. So again, on your bird song, you could revolt, which means you'd be able to remove enemy tokens, move your base there and get some more warriors on the board. You could spread sympathy by spending your supporters in order to get sympathy tokens. And one thing I need to mention is there's this martial law right here. It says that you must spend another card. You need to have another token if you have another player that has at least three warriors there. So if I was going to try to build sympathy in this clearing, I would need to have two yellow rabbit cards because that's my limit right here. Plus, I need to have a third card because there are so many enemy uh, warriors in that spot. 
Then you move into your daylight phase where you can craft and mobilize and train in whatever order you want, however many times you want to. And then you check your number of officers that will tell you how many times you can do these actions. And then you'll draw your hand back up. A couple more things that I want to talk about. Again, these words down here just mention that sympathy, you can't ever have a clearing with more than one sympathy token. It's limited to one. So there's that. And then there's also some really important special abilities up here that you need to see. And you're going to want to make sure that other players know this at the beginning of the game and throughout. There's this outrage ability. And basically what that says is that whenever another player removes sympathy, so like if there was a battle right here and these guys did two hits to us, so they'd have to remove the warrior first and then they could remove the sympathy. Remember, removing tokens always gets you a point. But if you ever remove a sympathy, what this is saying, and you're gonna to wanna to remind the players, is that that player needs to add a matching card from their hand to your supporters. So in this example, if this faction is going to remove sympathy from this clearing, they would need to hand us a yellow card that we would add to our supporter stack like that. If they can't, what they would need to do is they would just need to show you their hand of cards so that you could see that they don't have a yellow card, and you would just draw one off the top of the deck and put it right here. So that's the outrage one. That not only happens when they remove sympathy, but also if they move any warriors into a sympathetic clearing. So if this guy tries to come over here, they can, but because there's sympathy here, they're going to have to hand you a fox card or show you that they don't have a fox card. You'll draw the top card from the deck and put it here. So that's one ability you really want to. It's really tough to remember. You're just going to want to keep your eye on it and emphasize it and just remind the other players a lot. The other thing that they get is, this is pretty cool. As a defender, if anyone tries to attack you, Let's say it's this guy's turn and he tries to start a battle over here. Clearly we're doing a great job. Normally what happens is you roll the dice. Oh, okay. And the attacker would normally get the higher number and the defender would get the lower number. But because you're all about gaining sympathy and stuff, if they're attacking you, it's almost like martyrdom. You actually, as the defender, would take the higher number and they would get the lower number. And so especially if people are talking about attacking you, you're going to want to remind them of that. And at this point, I think that we've covered almost everything. I guess the last thing that we should cover, we should have covered this, was removing bases. So a base would be removed, usually in the case of a battle, but as we just talked about, it's kind of hard for people to battle you. But even if you're battling, if something happens and you lose your warriors and then you lose your base, then what this says, it just tells you right here, is that you're gonna lose all of your matching supporters. So any Fox supporters I've got in this stack, we're gonna discard them. That also includes birds. Again, it just says it right there. So if you had any bird cards in there, lose those. And then you're going to lose half of your officers, which is going to mean that you have fewer actions to do up here. And it's half rounded up, so that can hurt. And then there is a nice reminder here that if you no longer have bases on the board, then you, you have a limit of five supporters here until you get more bases out. So I usually like to end these videos by just giving some advice. This can feel super overwhelming for you as a player. Uh, remember to just read the words carefully. All of the factions, it's important to read the directions really carefully, but especially this faction, because there's kind of so many steps of vocabulary, especially on these ones over here. There's a lot of like information here that it's really easy to skip. So just make sure that you're going through the words mean stuff, especially, especially with this faction. The other advice that I have is when you take your very first turn, that's usually when I kind of like to say that you introduce yourself to the other players. There's a good chance you're playing with people who don't know this faction, but you also don't want to overwhelm them. So if I was playing this faction with people who don't know this faction, I would kind of talk about it like this. I would just start by explaining, hey, I'm trying to get sympathy on the board, explaining kind of who your characters are. So you're trying to get sympathy on the board every time you put a sympathy token out, that's going to get you some points. One of the ways that you're going to put these sympathy tokens out is by having these supporters. So I would just briefly explain that you have this hand of supporters that you only use the suit for. And I would explain to people this outrage ability, that if somebody tries to remove your sympathy, they're going to need to pay you a card in that suit. Or, if they even try to move into a clearing where you have sympathy, they're going to have to pay you cards. That's going to help you gain more sympathy. So you're going to want to explain that up front, and you're going to want to repeat it several times, not to be obnoxious to them, but it is just such an easy thing to forget. You're also really going to want to explain that if people try to attack you, 
that you're going to get the higher die where they would normally get the higher die. So you will have the higher die in all instances. If you're attacking, you always get the higher die. And if you are the defender, you're going to get the higher die. So that's going to be really important for them to know. Other than that, I think you're going to be able to just play the game and answer their questions as they come up. But those are the big things that I would make sure that they understand. That you're going for sympathy. For the most part, you're going to use supporters to get your sympathy. And that other players are going to give you supporters and that you uh, will always have the advantage in battle. I hope this video was helpful for you. I've been very nervous about making it because I know it's a lot to take in, and um, this faction, more than most factions, really has uh, given me a little anxiety to teach. But I hope that that was helpful. At the very least, maybe it showed you kind of what this faction's all about. If you want to see me teach other factions, if this was helpful, <laughs> there's a link in the description of this video for the other factions. Go ahead and check those out. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it, and I will talk to you later. Goodbye.